guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm just out on my morning walk and I thought I'd shoot a little clip here on the topic of the video, which is... This is a Fujifilm S5000, an S5500 fine picks digital camera. This was my dad's camera. He gave it to me and I thought I'd get a chance to try it out, maybe talk about it a little bit on this channel. So uh, this is actually 16 years old. It's either 16 or 17 years old. I need to double check that. But um, cameras have definitely came a long way since this. So I kind of wanted to have a little look at it and you know, shoot some things with it today and have a little look at how it shoots. I think it only shoots in 480p. That's crazy considering the cameras we have now, even our smartphones, shoot in 4K, some of them shoot in 6K. So it's quite incredible to think that this is what people shot on and this is the kind of quality that people were happy with uh, all that time ago. But um, it also gave me two of the lenses that came with it. Um, I'm going to test these out a little bit too as well, um, just to kind of see what kind of looks they give. Um, but it's starting to rain here, so I'm going to be quite quick. I've got a bit of cover here, but I don't want to get my cameras wet, so... By the way, in case you were wondering why my eye is red and creepy looking, I actually popped a blood vessel in it. So, yeah, apparently I need to wait about three or four weeks for that to, to repair itself, so. So you can see from the shots that I got with this camera that the quality isn't great. In fact, it's really, really not good. I will say that it does have some character about it, and if you use it as a story making tool to try and show something from the past, or talk about something that happened a long time ago, it may be useful if you use it like that. I'm also going to add this Hama polarising filter. Um, I've not tried this yet, so we'll just see what difference this makes. The polarizer helped bring out some saturation in the shots, but it seemed to only make a very subtle difference, with a little bit of contrast and just a little bit more saturation. The telephoto lens was really strange. It obviously allows you to zoom into the shot significantly, but as you can see, it creates a circular border around the shot from the actual lens itself, which really isn't ideal. This is just for reference to how far I actually am away from the camera when using that telephoto lens. So yeah, pretty far. You're actually meant to digitally zoom in when using this lens. Here's a shot I got without any zoom applied at all. Here it is again, zoomed in just enough to get rid of that circular border. And here it is again with the zoom at maximum. But you can see how much detail you're losing here. I definitely think one of the main issues with cameras back then was the fact that, uh, well, especially in this camera, is that it doesn't have any manual controls when it comes to video. It just had a shooting mode, so you can't really control your ISO, your shutter speed, or anything like that. So you're really just gonna have to deal with sort of lighting conditions that you have. So it's obviously really bright today, and I didn't have any sort of ND filter for this camera. So I think that's why a lot of the shots were probably quite blown out. So I did shoot a shot when I was out on that walk with the wide angle lens but the focus was out, so this is the next day. We had some blue skies, so I got a shot that shows the polarizer working a little bit more clearly. And as you can see, the blues and the greens become a bit more vibrant and a little bit more contrasty. The wide angle lens is definitely my favorite of the two. As you can see, it gives you a nice bit of extra space in your composition to play with. So up to now, everything that you've seen has been shot on a tripod. Trying to shoot any footage handheld with this camera is not fun. Uh, the footage is incredibly shaky. So I decided instead, why not throw this 16 year old camera set up on a gimbal and shoot my girlfriend's dog running about a field just to see how it performs. certain character and feel to an older camera like this 
and it's quite pleasing to watch in my opinion. It's not perfect and I think that's what makes it unique. Speaking of unique, this is powered by four AA batteries. Maybe I'm just being ignorant, but I really did not expect a camera to be powered by standard household batteries. The memory card is also only 2GB and I've not got anywhere near close to filling it at all. I could barely get 3 or 4 minutes of 4K footage off the A7 III with that kind of space. If you or any of your family has an old camera, then I would suggest digging it out just to see how it works. You might be surprised. That's all from this video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one.